Thanks, Chip Patterson. Uh, you did a whole breakdown of ACC football at CBSSports.com, so let's take advantage of, the, of your uh, hard work and research. Is Clemson on the way down? Potentially. Absolutely. No, there is, like, we could see this Clemson team not reclaim its mm-hmm. position as one of the two to three best teams in college football. We could see Clemson have a season where it wins the ACC and is not competing for a college football playoff. I don't think we will see a season where Clemson is not crowned the ACC champion at the end of it, but the margin for error that is set up right now in the ACC, we just saw a year ago where Pitt was able to win the league, was able to beat Clemson on the way to winning the league, Mm -hmm. and, and really never sniffed the college football playoff at all. So based on where the league is at right now in the eyes of the college football playoff selection committee, not only if Clemson wants to get back to competing for a national championship, not only do they have to win the ACC, but they have to look really good doing it. And that all starts with, you know, generating something out of the offense, an offense that was just dreadful. Right. Now look, Clemson's defense was one of the five best defenses in the country by multiple metrics last season. It's how they were able to actually win 10 games. Mm-hmm. I mean, do you remember 19 to 14 against Georgia Tech? I mean, do you remember like a six point <laughs> win against Boston College? I mean, they would just drag teams down into yeah. the mud because they were still so good on the defensive side of the ball. So Clemson, I do think is going to win the ACC, but whether Clemson is back or whether Clemson has course corrected really has a lot to do with what happens at the quarterback position in the passing game as a, in general. Well, we're going to talk about that. Um, I also remember the first game of the season in which, what was it, 10-3 Georgia? Was that the final score? Was one of No the, offensive touchdowns for the Georgia Bulldogs. It a was, pick six was oh. the only touchdown in the game as both of those defenses just ruined any idea of mm. modern football being played in Charlotte on that day. It was depressing <laughs> to, to watch. Uh, look, I, I understand, and I had a conversation with our friend Mike Felder about it. He goes, uh, if you want to elevate Georgia, you better elevate Clemson too because that defense stopped anything Georgia wanted to do. And it's hard for like people like me, uh, it's hard for me to wrap my mind around that. Uh, but it was offensive in how unoffensive it was. Um, here's my question, and you you alluded to it. Who's the quarterback at Clemson? We have two brand new coordinators. Uh, Tony Elliott's gone. Uh, Brent Venables is gone. Who's the quarterback? And what can we really expect from an offense that over the years has demonstrated uh, good but not great offensive line play? So what are we talking about here? The good news is I think that last year they found an identity really using Will Shipley. And Will Shipley got hurt at the end of the year, missed some time this spring. He and Kobe Pace are as good of a one-two running back combination that I think you're going to find in the conference. And that's where I think that um, we have talked at times about BGD, Big Game Dabo, (laughs) where Dabo kind of turtles up a little bit when it comes to the very biggest games. He's very conservative. He's very happy kicking field goals. He's very happy punting. He is going to do the not make a big mistake type game plan in order to win. And with two good running backs, if they can find a way... Uh, to get the offensive line play good enough to make that run game effective, then whether DJ Uyunglele takes the next step as a passer might not be as big of an issue. However, Mm. if they are not able to generate a consistent run game, then it's going to have to be being able to win with wide receivers that have underperformed and a quarterback that has not lived up to expectations. And here's Cade Klubnik, which makes it fascinating because NC State's defense is going to challenge. That's the first real challenge Mm -hmm. for Clemson's passing attack. Clemson will have to throw the ball successfully in order to beat NC State in Death Valley. There's also a little bit of a scheduling trap the week after NC State because Clemson's going up to Chestnut Hill to play Boston College. Yeah, Six points has been the deficit each of the two times that Boston College has played Clemson under Jeff Halfley. There is a lot of belief in that program that they are very, very close to accomplishing what they want to do. And I, I don't know if this is like widespread across this uh, unprecedented statewide platform, but the red bandana <laughs> game really means something yes. and generates a lot of excitement around the Boston College community. And wouldn't you know, 
the red bandana game is the week after NC State. So Clemson's got a tough NC State team and a challenging scheduling spot against Boston College. And out of those two games, we'll know whether or not it's DJU or Cade Klubnik because I don't think that subpar performance or at least, definitely not 2021 performance from DJU is going to be enough to get out of both those games with wins. I actually think there's even more of a problem for Clemson, and it might come the week before NC State when they Wake. have to play at Wake Forest, right? Um, I'm not expecting this to be last year's Wake Forest team, uh, but Dave Clawson, know, you know this, Dave Clawson knows what he's doing. Uh, and if there is any looking forward to their home game with NC State, that game will become even more of a problem. Let me flip this over to the Wolfpack. With everybody coming back, um, they obviously have to work out their own offensive line issues and replacing uh, Iki Aquanu, uh, not to mention some others. But um, with everybody else coming back and having one of the best returning quarterbacks in the country in Devin Leary, why? I mean, I know it's NC State, and I know how everybody processes it, but if we took the uniforms and the logos off and put the exact same situation on, I mean, I, we could throw out any any university, you know, Texas A&M. Exact same situation. Well, that's probably a bad one because they don't win either. Uh, but why can't State, why, I mean, why couldn't State take care of this? Mm -hmm. So what is this? Because there's the, the league. The, why can't they win? They could win the league. NC State is a team that I could see winning the ACC, but I do not see enough sure fire, uh, no doubt, you know, a hundred percent top to bottom advantages among the competition against the competition to think that they'll go twelve and zero. Does that make sense? No, like, no, I, NC yeah. State I, wins the ACC in the simulations where the ACC champion has two losses. NC State wins the ACC in the simulations where maybe even if it's just one loss, but there is just not enough of a gap. Like can NC state end up at the top of the pile? Yes, but there is not enough of a gap between NC state and the rest of the competition. So in the totally myopic vacuum, NC state, can you go and win the ACC? Yes, you can go and win the ACC. You have, as you mentioned, maybe the best quarterback in the ACC. Mm -hmm. You have, one of the best defenses in the ACC. I would only put them second to the Clemson Tigers right. that we mentioned just a little bit ago. However, I do think that the rest of the competition has to be acknowledged. And the fact that uh, not, it's not just Clemson, it's Wake Forest. Uh, Miami has the ACC Offensive Freshman of the Year in Tyler Van Dyke. And by the way, we are still working in a world where we believe the ACC will use divisions for this year. No, they will because they, they haven't said anything yet, and I don't understand why. But yeah, it's just another. I'll, I'll see about that. Um, there is a, a decent amount of intrigue based on what Scott Satterfield has done in the transfer portal. Sure. Picked up a couple of huge, much needed additions that I think are really going to help Louisville out. I think that Florida State is not a, a threat to NC State. However, it is a game that NC State could lose. I mean, there's just sure. there's just too many games on the schedule where it, the the gap is not big enough to be able to say, like, this is sure fire right. the pick, but could NC State end up on top of the pile? Absolutely. All right, so I, I don't like to do the, uh, here's game one, here's game two, do you think they'll win? They're, NC State should be 4-0 going to Clemson, correct? That would be uh, all the non-cons, right? Yeah, the non-cons should be 4-0, no question. I mean, no, no, I mean, I think it'll be somewhat difficult at ECU because it's week one and it's a rivalry game uh, within the state. Other than that, Texas Tech. Texas, I mean, listen, so Texas Tech will be a huge challenge for the back end of that NC State defense. The coach that they brought in is a guy named Joey McGuire. He was a former Baylor assistant who I like a lot. Mm -hmm. They were able to hit on not only some transfer portal guys, a guy named Tyler Shuck out of Oregon who's going to be able to chuck it around the yard, but they also went, remember Western Kentucky and Bailey Zappi last yes. year? Yes. Absolutely. Threw it everywhere. Yeah, yeah, Texas Tech went to go get that offense. Okay. And they're bringing that in. So that's why I say, you know, when we look at the depth chart for NC State, man, you'll love the defensive line. Oh, those linebackers, mm -hmm. if they stay healthy, we're talking about some of the best in the country. I mean, this is so exciting. If you were power ranking defensive line linebackers secondary, secondary is third, again, on a defense that I rank very highly. 
but I think that the Texas Tech game will give us such a such a great look at what could happen later in the season when they go up against, for right. example, Sam Hartman and A.T. Perry and a Wake Forest passing attack that's going to be absolutely elite. So I, if if the Texas Tech game goes well, then yeah, without a doubt, you've got some real confidence heading to Death Valley. Okay, so they go to Clemson. Let's just say they're 4-0. The schedule in terms of home and away for the Wolfpack actually works out pretty well in that the teams that would be more difficult for them, the Florida States of the world, Wake Forest, Boston College, all home. Mm -hmm. Virginia Tech at home. Now, that doesn't oh, mean... time to draw Virginia Tech, too. You talk about just like the stars right. aligning. This is the time in the post Fuente before Brent Pry <laughs> has it built up. Right. This is the one year to go get the Hokies because I am big picture in on Brent Pry being able to bring the Hokies okay. back up to speed. But even he has said the roster just ain't ain't up to par yet. So the end of the seat, like, like I'm not saying they're going to be ten and zero going to Louisville and Carolina because I'm not that dumb. Um, but. I just think it works out well. The schedule works out in their favor, home and away, non-conference schedule. Uh, like, I don't play the NC State stuff games. You know you know me well enough. I have never bought into it. I think they're good enough. And we'll see. You have secondary issues. Uh, I know that they have to rebuild an offensive line, uh, and that to me is the number one thing. Uh, you can mitigate secondary problems. Uh, you can't mitigate an offensive line that isn't good enough. Carolina's offensive line, especially earlier in the season last year, just wasn't good enough. And I know they had skill position issues, but to me it was all about their offensive line not being good enough. It wasn't about the quarterback. wasn't about anything else. Um, if State's offensive line plays well, I mean, they might not win at Clemson, which, which of course, uh, that would be the end of all of it. And then the week after that, of course, is the Florida State game, and Florida State should be better, but who knows? Um, but I, I, I'm here to dream, Chip. The so, the, the, <laughs> you want you want to get some tight butts? I mean, I, yeah, I don't mind. I don't mind creating some lemon booty. Going going to play Louisville. If, oh yeah. Hey, and don't let that be a like Scott Satterfield hot seat signature win <laughs> potential. You know, and well, and and look at the end of the if. So the preseason power ratings are yeah. kind of all over the place right now. Sure. But if North if NC State and North Carolina played on a neutral field next week, I think it might be a pick 'em. I've seen them rated very close okay. to each other, both about both between nine and ten points above the average FBS team. You know, sure. like Carolina's you, not gonna be as bad as they were a year ago. Well the I, I believe the quarterback play will still be pretty strong. Pretty strong. I think that you know Drake May is obviously the future, but mm -hmm. if we see Jacoby Criswell out there a decent amount, that would not surprise me. It's something that's probably good for balance. Josh Downs is one of the best wide receivers in the country. Like you can look at the recruiting, you can look at the prospects, the steps forward that some of them have taken at times. Mm -hmm. Change over defensive coordinator. You could talk yourself into it, but I'm just talking hard numbers. Hard numbers have NC State, and North Carolina, somewhere you know best teams in the country are about 28. 25 to 28 points better than your average FBS team on a neutral field. And right now, NC State and North Carolina are somewhere in that 8, 9, 10, 11 point range. So who's State going to play in Charlotte uh, in the ACC championship game? <laughs> if it's not Miami, then Mario Cristobal did something wrong. Mm, I agree. I agree. They, listen, they cashed in that Bitcoin money before Bitcoin crashed. <laughs> they have got some good foresight right there. We, we, we call it, on the Cover 3 podcast, we call it Crypto Ball. You know, that's what they're doing right there with uh, with all the crypto billionaires uh, and everybody that loves Mario Cristobal and, and the Miami family. But Tyler Van Dyke's the real deal. Yeah. Backed up the truck to get Josh Gaddis out of Michigan. Uh, I think that the freshman... Uh, on defense, who ended up playing really well for Miami down the stretch as Manny Diaz was trying to save his job, showing off the the future of Miami. Well, that only gives me more confidence in what Mario Cristobal can accomplish with that same group. And I just I look at the rest of that division, and it it is undoubtedly the weaker division there, where you've got turnover at Virginia, mm -hmm. turnover at Virginia Tech, uh, turnover at Duke, a coach that's probably going to end up uh, getting changed at Georgia Tech. And we're just le that's it. You're just left with Miami, Pitt, and Pitt, who, by the way, lost your offensive coordinator, your Heisman finalist quarterback, and your Bolitnikoff award winning wide receiver. Yeah. And then North Carolina, which has its own set of turnovers. I mean, heck, you know, 
North Carolina could be the second best team in the Coastal, and that's not a crazy nope. prediction to make. Not at all. So <laughs> they, if in your uh, in the scenario that you've played out, NC State would have to beat Miami in Charlotte in order to win the ACC. Yeah, it, and that's hoping that they uh, they finish off the undefeated season by winning in Chapel Hill. Uh, I'm just which I'm, again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just piling on uh, the uh, the idiocy here. Uh, 